This podcast provides insights and awareness on leveraging neurodivergent traits, developing confidence, and skills for entrepreneurial success. However, it is not a substitute for medical, psychiatric, or professional advice. If you require such assistance, please consult a qualified expert. You're listening to the Neuronax Podcast. I'm Jenna Johnson, your host and fellow neurodivergent, and together we'll be chatting about the powerhouse potential that lies within the neurodivergent community and flipping the script on how we earn money, find happiness, and live authentically in a world that was not designed with us in mind. Let's get started. Hey there, and welcome back to the Neuronax podcast. It's Jenna, your host. And last week, I spoke about growth mindset and how it's absolutely 100% possible to have a growth mindset as someone with ADHD. And I felt compelled to really bring that topic to the podcast surface because of my own growth mindset journey and the level of positivity, hope, and enlightenment that it really, truly has brought me personally. And I kind of feel unstoppable, to be honest. A growth mindset has taken me from the point of view of saying, oh, well, that's just not for me, I guess, to holy shit, why not me? There is no reason whatsoever that I cannot be this ideal version of myself. And I could go on and on and on about the level of joy being growth focus brings, but let's go ahead and jump into episode four because it's going to be a good one. Today's episode is special because I have some very, very exciting news for those with ADHD who are absolutely having the soul sucked from them by their nine to five job. We are going to be chatting about content creation and exploring why it's not just a side hustle gig, but possibly the very best career for individuals with ADHD. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty, let me share just a bit about my own journey as an ADHD content creator. Like many of you, I've faced unique challenges, but I've also discovered incredible strengths that come with ADHD, and content creation along with these strengths has been a game changer. This year has been a weird one, that is for sure, but I went from feeling pretty secure in my 9 to 5 job and really felt like I was crushing it to feeling like I would rather scoop out my eyeballs and play ping pong with them than log on to my day job. And that swift transformation was due to, let's say, some rather unsavory management. We'll just leave it at that. And in order to survive the mental three-ring circus that I was going through every single day, I decided to turn to my creative side a bit, and I found some inspiration through drawing and painting and really just embracing that artistic side. I wasn't really super keen on the idea of selling any of my work, any of my art on social media, but more into using social media as a way to document my progress on how I was improving from when I started, I believe it was in April. And just doing that, I began to notice trends in social media when it comes to keywords, grabbing an audience's attention and so forth. So I did some very small experiments with posts here and there. And I found that I loved seeing the results from those experiments and what really drives engagement. So with that, my social media presence began to transform a bit, but it was definitely, I guess what you would call very muddled, very, very muddled, very um, murky in the content creation waters. So in tandem with those experiences, I was having kind of this reawakening of my ADHD-ness and suspected autism, which was even more affecting my professional working relationships, goals, and whatnot. I began to become more and more aware that companies who claim to be progressive and inclusive were very much, in fact, not that when it comes to neurodiversity. And I felt like that was utter bullshit and that I didn't want neurodivergent people to feel stuck or like there was no way to make money and be happy and have all of these freedoms that they'd never experienced before. So quick sidebar here. I've always had a passion for teaching, coaching, training of some sort from a career perspective. Actually, during the pandemic, I did some online teaching through a platform called OutSchool became a certified personal trainer, and I've been in the learning and development realm in the corporate world for well over seven years now. 
And taking that passion and then coupling it with this newfound fire for advocating for neurodivergent privileges that we are told that we can't expect to ever experience, I wanted to pursue content creation as a career as there is so much proof that money and good money can be made through this. And there are many components of content creation that really cater to the way a neurodivergent mind, specifically an ADHD mind, operates. So with all of that, let's jump into an episode that is filled with insights and tips on why content creation just might be the very most perfect fit for those of us with ADHD. I'm going to kick us off by talking about hyperfocus. This is that intense concentration and productivity that many individuals with ADHD experience. Now think about it. How many times have you found yourself completely immersed in a creative project, losing all track of time? That's the magic of hyperfocus. And with content creation, with its writing, designing, editing demands, and all of that, that provides the perfect playground for our ADHD brains to thrive. And some of the most successful content creators attribute their achievements to these moments of hyper-focus. For us, it's not a hindrance at all. It's a catalyst for creativity and productivity. So instead of trying to suppress it, I want to provide you some tips on how we can leverage our super trait of hyper-focus as we explore content creation as a career full of potential for our ways of working. So here's a list of ways to leverage this hyper-focus in content creation. The very first thing is set clear goals. This seems very uh, common sense here, but a lot of times our goals, we have goals, but they're not exactly clear. So defining very specific objectives for our content creation sessions, that's going to give our hyper-focus a very clear direction of where to go. And that's kind of the catalyst. That is the push that our hyper-focus needs to get that in motion. The next thing I want to offer as a strategy is time blocking. This is allocating dedicated blocks of time for content creation, allowing you to fully immerse yourself in that task or whatever you need to do without distractions. I actually just revamped my time blocking schedule yesterday, and I want to put that up on our show notes so that you can see exactly how I do it. So maybe you can kind of transform it to fit whatever you're looking to achieve. I mentioned using time blocking to help you immerse yourself and get rid of distractions. Then you may be thinking, okay, I have ADHD. Eliminating distractions is literally impossible for me. I get distracted at the least bit of movement or interaction. I get that. I truly do. But I do believe that you can create a focused environment by turning off your notifications, closing unnecessary tabs on your laptop, and really finding a quiet space where you can, you may not be able to eliminate all distractions, but you can eliminate or limit the ones that you feel like distract you the most. In addition to time blocking and eliminating distractions, I want to offer you the strategy of breaking down tasks. Now, we're taking these big chunks, these big projects, and breaking them down into smaller, manageable pieces. And you can get smaller and smaller, as small as you want to go with these tasks to make them manageable for you. So just because someone may do step one, two, and three, you can break that into 10 steps if you want. So dividing your content creation process into these smaller processes This makes it much more approachable and less overwhelming to pursue content creation and kind of working backwards is going to be a way that we can do that in a digestible way. The next thing I want to offer is something that I recently just started and it has been highly effective. And this is the strategy of creating a creative ritual. So developing a pre-creation ritual or routine that signals to your brain that it is time to get into hyper-focus mode. That has been simply making a cup of tea. It has started to get a lot colder here. We are deep into the fall season. It is chilly, and I am very sensitive to the cold. So just making a cup of tea has started this uh, trigger for hyper-focus for me. Making that cup of warm tea, taking a few sips, triggers to my brain and lets it know, hey, 
we need to get some work done here. So I want you to try it. It doesn't have to be a cup of tea. It can be anything. But I want you to start incorporating that into your daily routines or whatever you need to trigger that hyper-focus. Next, I want to suggest a playlist for focus. Now, you may have some songs that you love to listen to while you're doing work. But are you really getting the work done if you are singing the words to work bitch by Britney Spears? Like, is that truly helping you get work done? Maybe on the treadmill, yes. And I have mentioned this before. I use Brain.fm. Now, Brain.fm is science-backed, science-created audio and sound specifically for people with ADHD. And the results are astounding. The amount of work that I can get done in such a small amount of time, because music is all new to me. Well, and I don't even want to say music because it's more just ambient sounds that are really soothing, but also very powerful in making you feel energized. So give it a try. But of course, there's always Spotify and Pandora, all of these other options that have these uh, focus playlists that you can play around with. If you're used to, you know, having your pump up list that really gets you going, maybe save that for the treadmill or for your workout and adjust to some different types of sounds for your content creation session. Now, this next one, I kind of laughed at when I was writing it out because this one is definitely very hard for me. And this is called single tasking. What this is, is it has you focus on one single aspect of content creation at a time to maximize the quality and depth of your work. So it sounds very commonsensical, right? Oh, but doing one single task is very difficult for me when we are so used to multitasking. Now, we all know, at least I think we all know, that multitasking doesn't really exist. So single tasking might be revamping your copy for all of your content that you're batching this week. That could be one task. But in that task, you have to have the consciousness to say, okay, if I think of this other idea that seems really cool, I have to just jot it down and continue on with the single task because otherwise it's not going to get done to the level of quality that I want it to get done. This next technique to hone in on your hyperfocus is called the Pomodoro technique. Now, what the Pomodoro technique is, is you break the content creation or whatever task you're looking to achieve into short, intense bursts of work. So, for instance, it might be 25 minutes. So, you set a timer and you say, for this next 25 minutes, I'm going to work on this. Then the 25 minutes is up take a little brain break for five minutes, go to the bathroom, grab a cup of water, whatever you need, and then you get back to it. So by having these little short breaks in between these intense moments of focus, engage yourself in some distractions, like some plans, some expected distractions in between. The next is a change of environment. So I often do this because we get a little bored of the same thing all the time, right? ADHD years, we want a little variety in our lives. So if I'm at my desk in my office at home, I've got my monitor set up just the way I like it, and I can be the most productive if I'm engaged and I'm feeling energized. But sometimes I need to just take my laptop to the living room and where there's a lot more sunlight, I can go there and have just kind of like a change of scenery and have some bursts of hyper-focus and then go back to my office after I've had that burst there so that I can get things done that I need to get done. So if you feel like you're kind of stuck, you're in a rut, you're not able to get motivated, try stepping outside with your computer. Try going to a coffee shop, seeing if that bit of variety will help energize your hyper-focus. Now, I know if you've been listening to my podcast or if you've been on my Instagram at all, you know I love a good vision board. Uh, Going hand in hand with that is mood boards and mind maps. I love collecting inspiration from various sources before I need to do something and just like piling it all together. So I might just have a free writing session where I've got a piece of paper and I'm just jotting down all of the ideas that are coming to me in that moment, not being self-critical, not judging, like whatever it is, whatever's flowing through my mind, I'm going to jot it on that piece of paper because maybe that will spark some inspiration that's going to create me a viral reel. I don't know. But having that moment of inspiration where you can just put all your ideas on a piece of paper 
It could also be um, putting down pictures, uh, cutting things out of magazines, really putting together the message that you want to convey, all the components into one space, and then kind of separating from there and organizing it from there. Give it a shot. It may work for you. So the way I just described it actually sounds really chaotic, but I promise you getting all of your ideas on paper is actually a way of organizing them and helping you create that burst of inspiration that you might need. The very last thing that I want to chat about as far as honing in on your hyper-focus is using a content creation framework. And developing a structured framework for your content creation process, what this does is it provides guidance to streamline your work. Streamlining is super helpful when we have ADHD. We need to set a clear direction of where we're going. So this entails thinking about who is your ideal audience? Who are you creating the content for? And really narrowing down your content to fit what your audience wants. And you might have this inclination to not want to drill down your message because you want to appeal to the masses, right? Well, well, I want to provide you some perspective when it comes to this. Providing broad and general information in our content creation can be helpful at first. But to gain those loyal sets of eyes and ears that feel you are speaking to just them, that keeps them coming back for more and more. Engaging your content with likes, comments, saves, shares. And look, there are now, what, almost 8 billion people on earth at this point. So niching down so you can't niche anymore is going to get you the most loyal fan club that will in turn be your word of mouth or free marketing. And those are going to be the people that will open their wallets to fund your existence as long as you're bringing the content that relates to them that speaks directly to them. Just to give an example of this, I always hear these content creators saying niche down, niche down, niche down. And I thought that I indeed had niche down as far as I wanted to go. And I was getting some engagement. I was getting some traction here and there. But one day I just decided I'm going to speak to just this specific segment of my niche. I did that. And in two days, I had 300 emails from a, a single lead magnet. Just by focusing on one specific segment of my niche, therefore niching down even more, I was able to get more traction, more engagement. And so you may be thinking, well, you're limiting your audience more, but I was able to speak to a specific group and that specific group gravitated towards my content because I did indeed niche down. So food for thought there. All right, let's take a quick break here before looking at our next component to content creation as an ADHDer's dream gig. Okay, before we continue, I want to introduce you to a game-changing resource that has been making a world of difference for many in our neurodivergent community. That's me included. It's called Brain.fm. Brain.fm is an innovative platform that uses the power of music and sound to help those with ADHD focus, relax, and sleep better. Whether you're dealing with sensory sensitivities, anxiety, or simply looking to just enhance your productivity, Brain.fm has got you covered. They have researched how to make rhythmic audio that guides your brain through a process called entrainment. Now, entrainment can shift your brain activity to help you focus, relax, sleep, and meditate. Made with science and tested with science? Yes, please. As a valued listener of my podcast, you can get an exclusive 20% discount on your Brain.fm subscription. Just use the promo code Neuronax when you sign up. That's N-E-U-R-O-K-N-A-C-K-S or click the link in the show notes. The very first time that I used Brain.fm, I was amazed because, well, I'm about to tell you something really embarrassing, but I had over 10,000 unread emails in my personal inbox, and I was determined to clean it up. And yes, I know over 10,000 emails. I hopped into Brain.fm's focus music, and not even two hours later, I was down to less than 100 unread with my emails organized in folders, and I unsubscribed from a bajillion email list that I joined almost two years ago when I was pregnant and getting all these updates from baby bloggers. Wait, no, no, no. See, the babies weren't writing the blogs. You see, ugh, never mind. I need Brain.fm right now. Check it out. Use promo code Neuronax to get 20% off your subscription. You can thank me later. Now back to the show. 
And we're back together again. So one of the things I've realized on my journey is that individuals with ADHD, they often possess a variety, a range of skills that align seamlessly with the multifaceted world of content creation. Whether it's writing captivating stories, designing these super eye-catching visuals, or mastering um, video editing, which is an art in and of itself, we tend to have a knack or our neuro knack, if I should say, uh, for wearing many hats. And guess what? In content creation, that's not just an advantage. It is a necessity. Our diverse skill set positions us for much success in content creation. So let's walk through some of the ways that our diverse skill sets, particularly for us with ADHD, how this can contribute to success in content creation. So we just already talked about one big thing, the hyper-focus advantage and the different ways to hone in on that hyper-focus. But another skill that we have that is monumental in content creation is creative thinking. ADHD people, neurodivergent people, they're able to harness the power of divergent thinking, allowing for the generation of these really unique and innovative concepts and content ideas. We are so adaptable. We have been masking our whole lives, so we're able to shape shift into whatever our environment needs us to be, so to speak. In content creation, you can adapt yourself to whatever your audience needs, but in a way that is authentic to yourself, that you're being genuine to the audience by niching down to whatever speaks to you the most. This adaptability will help us thrive in the dynamic content creation world, and we'll be able to quickly adapt to the ever-changing trends and our audience preferences and so forth. I did touch on multitasking already, but we are able to manage multiple aspects of content creation at the same time, such as research, writing, and multimedia integration. Those are all things that we can kind of shift from very easily as we are the super multitaskers that we are. Our enthusiasm and energy is something that is contagious. It is something that when people are around us, that energy just catches on and we are able to get people enthusiastic about the things that we're enthusiastic about. So if it's something that we're interested in, we can inject that enthusiasm and energy into our content, making it so much more engaging and captivating for an audience, which is what you need to have an engaged audience and therefore have Instagram and the algorithm and the powers that be push your content out to more and more eyes. Okay, ADHDers, are we not the most passionate people on earth? We are the most passionate people on the planet because we can completely engulf ourselves in these special interests and get so hyped up about it. So what we can do here is we can channel these intense special interests and passions. We can turn them into content resulting in really authentic and enthusiastic storytelling. In addition to the special interests that we have, the powerful passions that we have behind all of our special interests, generating ideas in such rapid succession and having these ideas so quickly. Now, this can be twofold. It can be a really great advantage to be able to rapidly develop these ideas, but also sometimes, I don't know about you, but I feel like sometimes I have too many ideas that I want to pursue, so it's hard for me to organize and prioritize what needs to come first. We've talked about so many ways that we can be fulfilled as ADHDers in a content creation career. There are so, so many of our traits that just fit so nicely into this exciting and multidimensional field. We have adaptability and resilience, and this will help us adjust with ever-evolving landscape of social media. And because I've thrown so much at you this far, I'm breaking this topic into a multi-part series because there really is just so, so much to learn and embrace as ADHDers who might be on this journey to content creation as a career. And so for now, we'll part ways, but I want you to stay tuned for part two of this series coming at you in one week. But until then, please take care of yourselves, friends. You are so very appreciated. I'll see you soon. 
Thank you so, so much for listening to this episode of the Neuronax Podcast. Tune back in each week for new inspiration, advice, and all things neurodivergence. If you found this podcast to be insightful, engaging, or just downright cool, please leave a review, like, share, and subscribe. You mean so much to me and your support is most appreciated. See you next time. Thank you.